I used to be a picker and an antique dealer. I've been to storage units and auctions, and it broke my heart that family sold valuable rare pieces for pennies on the dollar. So I left my picking days behind, because when you get picked, what gets picked is your pocket. Now, I'm a champion for everyone that needs help uncovering their rare finds. With me, everyone wins. This is Rare Finds with Rachel Fitch. This is how it works. My client gives me five days to discover, display, research, price, sell, and clean an entire house. But we can handle it because that's what we do. Gray, do you know how to get here? It's not much further, just right up here. We're supposed to be on Westwood. Uh. We are so excited about getting into this house today. You can never judge a book by its cover. And this might be typical, but any house can have treasures in it. And we are so excited about getting in there, digging, and finding out the story of the people who lived here. Well, it smells good in here. Well, that's good. Walking into the house, I'm already excited. There was a grandfather clock, there was a clock on the mantle. It is going to be packed full of money. Let's get checkout set up here in front of the fireplace where we normally do it. Hey, it's a nice clock up on the mantle there. When we're getting the, uh, the checkout set up, it's the first thing we always do because it's the, it's the heart of the home and we that's where we want all the money to be collected and have a nice secure place. Great, do you think there's going to be enough space for all the people? The lines? Oh yeah. My crew absolutely rocks. Allie Graham Osborne the third is from Huntsville, Alabama, and he has a wonderful accent. Umbaka! Umbaka! Never in my life heard of it. But he also has such a passion for art and for rugs. Just fine pieces. If there's a the most classic designed piece in a house, Gray will make a beeline for it, and for some reason it's always worth a thousand dollars. He has such a good eye for that. Cynthia Aleman is my left arm. Now everybody have your checks ready. Boss, time to do itemization. We call her the tornado. <laughs> what? And the reason we call her the tornado is because I could literally leave a cell site, come back an hour later, and the entire, you know, first floor is completely ordered, lined up, black draped. She's already got some pieces set aside for me to research. Hey boss, come and see these dolls. She's wonderful. <laughs> Jason Smith, he's my brother. We're kind of joined at the hip a little bit. Jason! Jason! We have great boundaries. Donde es tu? Que es tu problema? I can be his boss and his sister literally in five minutes. Did you bring my kit? It doesn't matter really what's in a house. When it comes to me, I'm gonna sell that stuff. I'm the number one slinger. Let me tell you what Jason's passion is, and it has been since we were little kids. He loves coins and currency and gold and silver. I think that's pure. Look at it. Sure feels like it. Main reason metals are my thing, of course, was because I was a coin collector as a kid, and I read every coin book there was. And he is such, such a gentle spirit, and everybody loves Jason. This house is already showing me a few of the secrets. And I know that there are gonna be more rare finds in this house, and we're gonna get in there and uncover so many cool pieces for our client and turn it into money. So the first thing I did when I walked in is I saw those clocks on the mantle. And if they're old, which I think they are, there's gonna be some real value there. Hey, check this out. Pocket watch. Oh, that looks nice. I'm not familiar with that brand. 18 karat. Daddy got a new cash. <laughs> it was so awesome. Gray found the mark, 18K. 
there's a, a sense that you get. You develop an eye for the detail in a, in a piece of merchandise. The house is really starting to come together. The tables are all set up and we're putting those black drapes on there and really starting to empty the cabinets and the drawers and we are really starting to find some neat pieces. You know what, look, Mercury. It's got a Mercury pendulum on there. That'll bring some money. Yeah, let's figure it out. I look on that mantle and I saw that carriage clock and I immediately recognized that it had a mercury pendulum. And of course they don't make mercury pendulums anymore because if they break, it's poison. My gut right now tells me that this is gonna be between uh, five to $800. That is awesome. Good job. Boom, done. We have been here not even five minutes and we've already found an 18 karat gold watch and a late 1800s mantle clock. So who knows what this house will provide. It's exciting. Still to come on Rare Finds. Gray, seriously, I have so many freaking goosebumps right now. When I saw those fabulous Art Deco lines, it immediately made me think of Edgar Brandt. This sale is awesome. We've been there for like 10 minutes. We've already uncovered at least $2,000. And that's not counting sofas and TVs and all that stuff. So this sale is gonna rock. I'm already kind of feeling that this, uh, there's gonna be a lot of age. We're gonna have to uncover it, but there's gonna be some really neat pieces that are just gonna have to kind of, I'm gonna have to fill them out. They're gonna be in there and I'm gonna have to find them. That's my job. Oh, baby. So I saw this box and it was labeled Bill's Trains. Now that got my heart racing because that could mean a lot of different things. Oh, wow. Look at this, Lionel, 1957. Oh my gosh. This is how you always tell a train by its engine. I know some collectors are gonna fall in love with this 1957 Lionel train. It's probably someone who actually had this train, lost it somewhere in their lives, and now they get the opportunity to own it again. It's pretty exciting. One of the things that I think sometimes gets missed is the outbuildings. Sometimes there can be really great things in there, and I have a real good feeling about this outbuilding. I think there's gonna be some rare finds in here. <laughs> great full guard piece. Today is the hottest day in Texas. In the Hill Country, 108, hottest day we've had all summer. And I'm in the barn. It's probably three pounds right here. Cha-ching, silver, silver, silver. My hands are black and I don't care because they're fixing to be green because we're turning that silver into cash for our client. I love this job, even though I'm sweating.
So we've got to ride this wave of momentum. What I know in this business is that when you find one item, you'll find another great one. And this place is packed full of really cool stuff. So maybe if we get in that garage, we've been in this outbuilding, we can find another rare find. We got this. Jason, let's get up in the attic. You hand stuff down. Yes, ma'am. On the light, on the light. Go, go, go. Oh, that is cool. That's on it. Oh, it's burning hot, 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 hot. You can feel the heat coming out of the attic. It's probably a 1940s, 1950s toy. Put this on right here. We'll connect the register to Plug. you. Oh, wow. I'm going to see if I can actually get some work out of you here. And go. All right. Okay. Woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. You don't, have to wear, you don't have to wear that all day. Some of the sweetest words that I hear when I'm getting ready for an estate sale or oh my word, that come out of Gray's mouth because that means that he has found something really cool. Nice. Nice. Good job. This is an andiron. Gray, seriously, I have so many freaking goosebumps right now. When I saw those fabulous Art Deco lines of those andirons, it immediately made me think of Edgar Brandt. He was a turn of the century iron worker and he was French. And some of his and irons have sold for upwards of $60,000. You know what, when you get it out in the light, when you really take a look at it. I think they're gonna turn out to be something, but we don't know yet, so time will tell. It's got incredible detail. The and irons are a rare find. You don't see things like this all the time. I'm gonna secure them tonight and I'm gonna get in front of my computer, I'm gonna make some phone calls, and I'm gonna see if these really are Edgar Brandt because they could be worth as much as $60,000. Probably from about 1925, and if they're real, 10,000 is gonna be our starting point with them. With a lot of work and a lot of effort, we've got this house completely organized and ready for the hardest part, research and pricing. That beautiful handwriting. I got a call from the experts, basically, in the world of just um, wrought iron and different things. This is Rachel. We literally spoke with the person who wrote the book on Edgar Brandt. She, uh, she confirmed it. They confirmed that the andirons that, that I have for sale, they're not Edgar Brandt, that the ones that we are basing all of our information on were actually forgeries of Edgar Brandt's work, and so, I still have some decent andirons, but they're just Victorian bronze andirons. I'll still get about $1,000 for them, which is awesome for my client, but oh, they were not the home run that I needed them to be.
go. It's about eight o'clock. It's about an hour before the cells to start. We've got a great line already forming. We're so excited about all the people who are going to get here. And we open the doors and they just charge and go for it. It's exciting. It's fun. And that's one of the best parts of my job. Well, I'm going to check out the recliners and then the trains and... Oh, there's my car. That... <laughs> right. I'm your competition. Yeah. Now, this is my bodyguard <laughs> right here. <laughs> I'm going to put him in the middle. Hunting equipment, usually you head right into the garage. If you want your stuff that you find online on Fitch's um, website, you have to be here early. Because as you can see, the line will grow and you won't get your stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I'm gonna open that door. We're gonna get started. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> all right, great. I'll take all the silver and all the gold jewelry. All of it. All of it. What else? $100. $100. Well, I finally got in there, got what I wanted. This is the truck I was after. I don't really know, you know, history on it or anything. I just saw it on the pictures and fell in love with it. They are um, they are going to be right through the kitchen, then through to the workshop, and then, then to your right. What's the price? How about 15 for the pair? Does it have the hand irons in there? Okay, add thousand dollars. Now we're to, now what's he at? Oh, that's what I'm liking. Oh, oh. Six thousand. All right. Now the sleep bed. Are you good on that? Huh? All right. We do this for clients. I'm buying these pieces for a client. We sure appreciate your business. Thank you so much. I enjoy coming. It's worth getting up at five in the morning. Absolutely. Uh, Rachel, we enjoy her sales. She's very honest and has very good sales. A broken clock is right at no, least twice a day. You know that, right? Security work out here. Analyzing. Thanks for clearing the way, Gray. This is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I'm not about breaking the I always try to make sure it's all ready for you. So in the first hour, we sold the hand irons, we sold the trains, we sold the pocket watch, and then a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> when are we going to eat, boss? We haven't eaten since yesterday lunch. Gray and I you know had what? a lunch, lunch, is on, lunch is on Fitch's steak oh, sales today. Sweet. <laughs> So I look over and there's this little man walking down the sidewalk and he's got suspenders on and a belt because <laughs> you know you can double keep those pants up. And he just kind of has a little shovel walking up to me and says he's got something to sell me. Well, I don't really have a store or anything like that. Are you just going to show me your work? Well, you might want to buy some. I don't know. Well, let's go take a look. Okay. We'll take a minute. All right. He takes me over and he shows me this really kind of pretty handmade stool that he had tooled the leather on top. That's pretty cool. Look at this work here. So you, this is all hand stamped? Oh, this all not stamped, it's, it's tool. You tool it? So are you cutting this with your hand? You know, he was so sweet. He was 92 years old. And so CB, mm -hmm. you're 92 years old? Yep. That's pretty good. Well, that's what everybody's saying. Now my grandma's single. <laughs> Then he reaches into this other box and he pulls out this other thing. Now what's this? Well, that's two. And I was wondering how do you sit on that? That goes to the bathroom for an extra roll of toilet paper. <laughs> oh, I get that. Yeah, that's so what you're saying. Uh, made, but should made, you just I put that right next to the toilet, you're good to go. You know, the tool was 80 bucks, but he was 92 and he did that with his own hands. It was so worth it. Here you yeah, go. There you go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. He's probably going to go back in the cell and spend that eighty dollars anyways. I I buy a few things once in a while. <laughs> I work at the jail, and it was supposed to be a, a team tattoo, but nobody got one but me. <laughs> go. go. 
I'm gonna beat you, Cynthia. Start it before I get it. Mm. Mm. That's how you do that. Let's get that chair moved over there first, people. Yeah, he always magically reappears right after the lifting has been done, and somehow he vanishes in the thin air like Houdini, right about the time a man's got to bend over and move something. But now he's my brother-in-law, and I love him there. Now. I don't mean, I don't mean to suggest that Jason Smith or Smith would ever dodge any heavy lifting. Oh, Jason! <laughs> oh, we meet, we meet again, again, old friend. friend. <laughs> if you haven't noticed yet, I'm the only one from Fitch State Cell sweating. Well, the cell has gone wonderfully. We um, were probably a little over $13,000, and that's awesome for a first day. I bet we've had at least five to 700 people look at the stuff today. So it's, um, it's kind of exciting to have that many people come through a cell, but it's actually pretty typical too. And so uh, not a lot of drama happened. We've been kind of chilled out, a great steady flow, and uh, can't, can't beat that. So we'll see. So here we are, it's Saturday morning, we all had some time to get some rest and we're excited about the opportunity to get some more stuff sold. I'm here to get two things with the washer and dryer half price. What do you say about that? She's going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is! I Ooh. am excited Ooh. because it's going to be fun. They're going to pile in here and they're all going to be frantic and they're going to be running looking for what they already previewed yesterday hoping to be able to pick it up at half price today. <laughs> All right, so it's Saturday. And what's Saturday? Half price. Half price day. So everything in the entire place is half off. There's a little bit of silver, a little bit of gold. Of course, that's the exception. But besides that, we're ready to go. So are you Mark? Get set. Let's go. <laughs> This is, this is um, a clock that was made in France, but inside, you can see the pendulum, it's mm. actually mercury weights. There's a glass vial with mercury. And it's just a cool piece. It's a great value at 325. Okay. So, just some, all right, there you go. How's that? How about that? Go, go me, huh? She stole my sale. <laughs> it's a great morning. We've got a lot of people in here. It's half price day, and uh, I've already sold a clock that Gray was supposed to sell, but I got to him first. And, uh, you know, just excited about the, the energy and how many people are here. And, okay, so how much should I have on this rug? 495 So half price is a great value. So that'll be $247.50. dollars 75 right? $247.75. Do you want to do that? What are we thinking? I was thinking 150 Oh, you are. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Just give me a second. No. No way. How about, um, how about $227.75? Seventy-four. How much you want to spend? I didn't really want to go over to my Then it's a deal. Two hundred. Boom. All right. Now you got rolled yourself though. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I better get this clock moved before someone knocks it over, and then I'll be in deep bobo. long day. We've been working hard. We're probably two hours out of getting the cell wrapped up and um, we've got to get in there, 
to get the tables broken down. We're going to donate everything that's left to charity. There was a lot, tons of treasures. There was some cool stuff we've uncovered, that silver and the gold, the, the and irons. Even though they ended up being what we won't hope they would be, we still we still got decent money for them. And you know, we sold sofas and televisions and you know, just the stuff of life. And uh, people need stuff, you know. I got to get in there and break down some tables. So let's see how we did. And it looks like we did right at $18,000. Good job. No! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs>